Pleasant good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning to our listening audience. This is Sister Curleen Bean, and I'm coming to you live this morning. And here we have enough, another episode of Methodist Memories and Appreciation Hour. Today, we have a super special guest in the house today. We're talking with uh, Miss Tiffany Smith Ambrista, and we are so, so delighted. So before we get started, we just want to invoke God's presence with us. So let us pray. Our God and our Father, we are deeply grateful for your love. We appreciate that we are here today. We ask and we beseech your blessing on this arrangement. Have your Holy Spirit to really permeate us so that we are able to ask and answer the questions that our audience need to hear. Please help me as I continue to promote our Methodists throughout, not only in this church and in this country, but throughout the world to our listeners. So I thank you for this. And once again, I ask your Holy Spirit to be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 folks. Here is the big thing. Miss Tiffany Smith, right there, and we are going to ask her to introduce herself, because we're so happy to have her here with us. Yes, thank you, Curly, and I just wanted to point out, because my husband would not be happy, is just Tiffany Ambrister. Yes. We <laughs> apologize to <laughs> Tiffany's <laughs> husband, <Yes>. Tiffany <laughs> Ambrister. She's not a modern woman, all right? <laughs> Tiffany Ambrista. Yes, I'm old school. <laughs> <laughs> you leave and cleave. So yes, Carolyn, I thank you for this opportunity and I feel honored to um, be here with your listening audience and share with them some memories of my experience as being a Methodist and what I would like to be the take-home message if, if you remember nothing else from this, but to simply remember that, you know, it's Methodism and being a Methodist is something that I have always been proud to say and I've always been happy to proclaim that I'm a Methodist and that I attend St. Paul's Methodist Church. I've attended no other denomination. This has always been my church and my worship of choice from when I was a child. Amen. And so I can credit that to my parents because they weren't individuals who moved from church to church to church to church. They always instilled in my brother and I that once you're grounded in something and once you found your niche, per se, you stick with it, you become loyal to it, and you help it to grow. And so they were the perfect examples for me in being a Methodist. Although my mom, before she got married to my father, she was a part of the Moravian church. And from the history that I've been told, the Moravian and Methodist is very similar. So it yes, wasn't yeah. a hard um, transition, transition yeah. for her becoming a Methodist. So I, <clears throat> she always told me from I was a child that I was born in the Methodist church where she was pregnant with me while she was here. So all those great hymns and stuff I was listening to as, an in, as a, a fetus yes. in her womb. So I would credit my um, dedication and loyalty to the Methodist church to my parents because they were very good examples for me. And it's not just I'm just going just because of my parents, but I develop a love for Methodism on my own. Mm. And as a young individual, I think it's important when we are doing things of this nature, media and stuff, to let younger people know that it's okay to be Methodist. It's actually a beautiful, beautiful atmosphere to be a part of. And I've found that within our church, we are very welcoming and we're very supportive. I mean, everybody has their issues, no right. matter which denomination, Christian or not, you have your issues. But overall, the, the big picture of Methodism is so beautiful, and it would be um, a disservice to this denomination or to this 
entity to say that, oh, it's too old or it's too old-fashioned because I think that's where the beauty, the beauty of Methodism of is. Yes. Those hymns that John and Charles Absolutely. Wesley wrote and you, you just feel the connection of the hymns yes. with the Bible and they're biblically based. They're yes. not just hymns that they just um, would have just created off uh, offhand. Mm -hmm. They would have had them biblically based and they would have been rooted in the Holy Spirit. And I think it's so beautiful to sit back and listen, and especially on a Sunday morning when we sit in those hymns good. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the, 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 the atmosphere changes when we, when we are singing those. So I think it's beautiful to rely on the history of Methodism and not necessarily just say, oh, it's just an old denomination because that's a part of the pride that you can talk about, saying, hey, my denomination didn't just come about 20 years ago, yeah. 10 years ago. You can say that it's a deep history behind this and that, you know, it, the progression from then until now is still marvelous, in my it opinion. Is. It is. Yes. You know? So tell me, Tiffany, your first, you were baptized, should I say that? Were you christened? Christened, yes. You were christened mm -hmm. as a... Baby. A baby. Uh, your parents are the ones who keep telling you what the pastor name who baptized. Yes, Reverend Perry. Oh, okay. Yes, Reverend, Reverend Perry. Perry. And I remember they told me that um, when <laughs> I read, we read up for the baptism, you know, you hand the baby to the Reverend. Right. He said, I think my mom said, I didn't make a sound. She said, this one love water. You <laughs> the was ready. Said. So this one loves water. I don't think I made a sound. Either it's going to be I didn't make a sound or I, I cried profusely. But I think I remember saying, me, because I was a chunky baby. And so when he handed me life and he poured the water on my head, he's like, mm, I didn't make a sound. I just loved it. Say, yes, pour it on me, Lord. <laughs> so you were also involved with... Uh, St. Paul's, the school, the college itself? Oh, yes. Like I said, this has been the only church I've attended. And outside of kindergarten, St. Paul's Methodist College is the only college that I, the only school that I attended as well. So I would have been in St. Paul's College from grade two or grade one, I believe, up until I graduated. So my root in Methodism is not just in the church but it's also in my education because with Methodism, we stand firm in education right. and we're very um, gung-ho about children and their education. And so what my parents would have done for me is since there was a school attached to the church, mm. it was only fitting in their opinion that I then attend St. Paul's Methodist College from lower primary up until graduation. And my involvement with the church and the school went hand in hand because I would have been involved with the um, Sunday school. You know, I went through the process of graduation into the church system from infancy up until adulthood. So I would have went to Sunday school, gotten confirmed. You have youth group. And when you are youth at that time, we had like, programs that we were involved in and I would have been selected some of the youth in the church would have been selected to attend an organization called the Youth in Quentro and that's when all young people from the ages I think of like 16 to 25 they come together and we that's from the Caribbean and the Americas we all get together for like a, a seminar a week-long seminar it would have been a different countries and I remember the two that I attended were the ones in Antigua and then in Jamaica. So being a part of the church and being involved in it afforded me the opportunity to attend these conferences and they were beautiful conferences to, to see young people coming together with one mind on one accord to worship God and to share their culture because we were from different islands, different countries. So it was an opportunity for us to share our culture, share our experiences and share our love for God. And we worship and we um, did crafts and all these things. And so it would have been myself and a lot of other individuals 
in the church at that time who were of the same age. We all ran together with uh, Faith Smith, um, Maisie Brooks. She would have passed away. God bless her soul. Maisie Brooks? Is it Brooks? Yes. Okay. No, I don't know. I'm asking. Yes. Maisie, Maisie Brooks. Okay. Is it Maisie? Miss Brooks. I don't remember her first name. But right. I know it's Miss Brooks. Miss Brooks. Yes. And so they would have been the ones who were chaperones and um, helped us to get our things together. And so I just want to let young people know that it, when you become involved in a church and you are dedicated and you do things that um, make your character look good, because you know when you're leaving a country, people are going to make sure that they carry the ones who are going to be a good representation of a, the church, and B, the country, because it's different countries. So once you fall in line with that, those things are afforded to you. And so I would have been able to go twice to the youth in Grand Road. Like I said, the first time was in Antigua. That was the best one, in my opinion, because <laughs> we stayed in Jolly. I think it's, the hotel was called Jolly Ranger Hotel, and that was the only time we were at a hotel. All the other times, we were at a dorm rooms mm -hmm. in <laughs> on a school campus. So I was happy that I got to experience that first youth at Grancho in Antigua, and we ate at the restaurants. They treated us so well. These little young children run around, <laughs> eating up the people food, running around their hotel. <laughs> so it was the perfect experience, uh, the Antigua one. That was the best, in my opinion. And so... All the others would have been on campuses and was more like a camp feel, whereas Antigua was more like a vacation, right. <laughs> a vacation for us. So we didn't have um, that experience anymore. But those of us who went to that Antigua trip, Tell we can say that, yes, that was the best. Tell me uh, if you could recall mm -hmm. some of the persons from here that yeah. went to Antigua at the same time. Yes. So at the time of Antigua, we had myself... Rosa Moore, Zephanie Moore. That's Hold on. Rosa Moore. Zeph. Okay. Zephanie. That's uh, Sister Amanda's daughter. Daughter. Daughters. Both daughters. of them went. And Rosa the, and Zephanie, I believe. And Zephania? Zephanie. Zephanie. All yes. Right. And then we had, I know, um, uh, who was else? Who else was there? Shall I remember Rosa, Any Zephanie, male? Antigua. Because remember, we didn't have much male participants at that time for Antigua. I know Aunt Faye was the chaperone. And then we had some other children from the other three churches. Because I remember Miss Lynn, Lynn Forbes Thames was a chaperone because we uh -huh. stayed in the room together. Uh -huh. um, I remember some of the other children from St. David's and St. Andrews. I remember um, Edith Bodie. Okay. That's She's now at St. Andrews, I think. She She's was, at St. Andrews. Yes, yes, St. Andrews. She was there. Um, a chaperone. Chaperone. Okay. I don't remember because, like I said, once I get in those atmosphere, I leave Bahamas behind. I go <laughs> make all kind of friends with everybody else. So I'm, I was hopping from country to country. Of course, you know, I went to Jamaica. Then I was at Panama. I was at Barbados, Curacao. So I was all over the place. I didn't even remember who was there from my own country. <laughs> Because I was too busy making friends. Oh, St. Kitts and St. Nevis. I was all over with them. That's an excellent thing to do. You were a great representative. I tell you, I represented the Bahamas For well. the Bahamas and St. Paul's Methodist Church. I can church. remember all the friends I met. <laughs> who met with us from the church? I don't know. Okay, well, tell us about that. Someone who you met who was still active and doing some things in the Methodist Church. Okay, you mean from Antigua Church? Yeah, yes. Yes, thank you, because there's one individual. I'm going to tell you the scenario. Okay, so, you know, it's a week long of activities. Every day we're doing different things. And on this particular day, it was like a free day where you could have toured the island and everything. And for some reason, like I said, because I was moving around from country to country, on this day, the Bahamas, we were together. But it's like the group went ahead of me, and I was just stuck downtown Antigua. I don't know anything about the country. <laughs> downtown Antigua, when I look up, it's like I'm there by myself. I didn't see anybody from our contingency. And so what I had to do was be smart. I said, okay, Tiff, 
you got to put your thinking cap on. So I saw another group of per- people because it was downtown. So it wasn't like it was just us only. It was like tourists and different persons traveling about. And so I saw a group that looked like they were a part of the Antigua trip. And mind you, I maybe have been, may have been 16, 17 at the time. And so I just started inching with them. I started in closer and closer as they move I, until one of them was like, excuse me, are you lost? And I said, to be honest, I don't know where my group is. And I just want to stay with you guys because you all look like you all are part of the youth in Metro. <laughs> and they were for St. Kitts and Nevis. And they say, sure, come. And we went and we shopped and we <sighs> ate. We went to a KFC that was there. And they carried me up and down, introduced me to their friends. And all the guys was like, oh, wow, Bahama Mama. I said, hey, take it easy. (laughs) But I was able to make a connection. And one of the individuals, her name is Zell Charles. We connected a little more than the others. And she's from St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. And I, no, St. Vincent, she's from St. Vincent. And we've been talking up until then. We found each other on Facebook because obviously we, we um, exchanged numbers, exchanged gifts at the time, and we kept in touch. Mm-hmm. And we're friends on Facebook, and we even WhatsApp from time to time. So she's one individual from the first Encuentro that I met and I still keep in contact with. And even from the Jamaica Encuentro, there was a young man. His name was Jason. And we like we we were able to connect over there as well and i had his number we would call each other from time to time and like i told you before we began my voice is a dead ringer for who i am so right. whenever i called them and i'm trying to disguise my voice like <laughs> oh this they already know it's no. me cuz who else have this voice so we would have lost touch, though, Jim, um, Jason in Jamaica, because I would have changed phones. He would have moved, and then we weren't able to connect again. But Zell Charles, she's an individual that I've watched. Like, we watch each other grow up. She got married. She showed me pictures of her, her child, her husband, and I did the same with her. And so we still had that connection even now. Even though I never traveled to St. Vincent to meet her, she never came here. But who's to say what can happen in the future because we are still a connection from the first in Grento at 16, 17 years old. And Kelly Jolly, Reverend Kelly Jolly in the Nassau Circus. She was at the Antigua um, conference, and we've been friends from then until now, too. And I remember when Kelly decided to leave, because she was in Mm pre-med. She decided she got the conviction there at that in Grento, because Reverend Roll even teached. That's when I first met Reverend Roll, too, because he preached in Antigua. Who was our bishop at this time? Our bishop at the time, Reverend okay. Rule was in Antigua. He met, he did a message. And Kelly and I met in Antigua. And I remember when she made the decision to leave Madison to go into the ministry. And Kelly was so sweet and kind. And I just remember that day right now talking to you. I can remember the day that she made the decision to move forward into ministry. And now, how many years later... We are still friends from that as well. And she's so, an excellent minister. Oh, beautiful inside oh and out. Oh, my goodness. That's oh. what I'm saying. So this is the opportunities that, ar- that arose for me from this Methodist church being involved. Like, I have friendships that are going to last the span of my life right. because we had this connection in Methodism because all of us who were there were Methodist young people fired up, ready to roll, come with ideas and initiatives, just ready to serve and worship the Lord. Well, what do you think is, is, is what's happening now? Uh, do we still have those people who are fired up, who are ready to go? And, and if we don't, what do you think is lacking? What do you think is 